Britain wants. It stains the historic page. Freedom was vital struck by party rage. Cromwell the fever watched, the knife supplied. She maddened, and by suicide she died. Hey, I'm Dave Malinsky. I'm the researcher, writer, creator, and performer of Playing at War. Playing at War is a 40-minute one-man play about theater in New York during the American Revolution. Now, we all have our image of the revolutionary period. You know, heroic, noble patriots, George Washington, John Adams, all those people, Continental Congress, signing the Declaration of Independence, pure, noble, liberty warriors of freedom and all that fun stuff. And then, at the same time, we have the enemies of freedom and liberty, the British Army, burning towns in the name of the tyrant King George, and clearly there's nothing good about them at all, right? Well, when you look at theater history during this time, this image that I just gave you, it flips on its head. Whatever their thoughts of human liberty, which of course included only white males with property, as we all know, they did not, con they did not include the theater in their conception of liberty. No, no, no. Continental Congress in 1774 banned all performance of plays throughout the colony the same time, whenever the British Army took a city during the war, they opened the playhouses closed by Congress and they performed plays. And one of the most important people who lived through this exciting time was William Dunlap. Dunlap was a teenager while New York was occupied by the British Army. He saw his first plays performed by the British soldiers and he would go on to become America's first theater historian. This is his magnum opus. Oh, and he also did a portrait of some person. I don't think he needs any introduction. <laughs> Dunlap may have taken George Washington's portrait, but he had his own opinions of the man. What if Washington caused the Great Fire of 76? Playing at War features Dunlap's life and experiences, but that's not all. It includes excerpts from plays from the period, songs, yes, I do sing, and most importantly, prologues, monologues written by the British soldiers themselves. It humanizes these figures who in all these Hollywood films and books and yes, even video games have been shown as just pantomime villains. In Playing Up War, I seek to give these people, alongside the Founding Fathers and even minor figures of revolutionary America, real life, real agency. This is the gravestone of newspaper owner Hugh Gain. His New York Weekly Mercury is one of the many sources used in Playing Up War. I wrote Playing Up War in 2011. This was during the rise of the Tea Party movement and how they sanctified American history of a single, simple good versus evil narrative. That really cut close to me, that hurt. Especially as I was doing historical study on this very subject. But I knew that the theater would be the absolute best way to get the message out. And that's what I'm trying to do here in Playing at War. Hope to see you soon. No more from the sound of drum retreat. While Marlborough and Galway beat The French and Spaniards every day When over the hills and far away Over the hills and 